The CEO of Anthropic, Dario Amodai, says artificial intelligence could start replacing big swaths of office jobs in as little as two to three years, and he's not softening the message. Speaking at Bloomberg's Tech Summit, Amodai said, We're not talking about 20 years, we're talking about two to three years, and it's not going to be pretty. I don't want to sugarcoat it. In a subsequent interview, Amodai went further when he told Axios that AI could wipe out half of the entry-level white-collar jobs and spike unemployment to 10 to 20 percent in the next one to five years. Now, this is not wild speculation from some YouTuber. Amodai runs a company producing what many regard as one of the finest AI models. In that same Axios interview, Amodai said, He's speaking out in hopes of jarring government and fellow AI companies into preparing and protecting the nation. Few are paying attention, he said. Lawmakers don't get it or don't believe it. CEOs are afraid to talk about it. Many workers won't realize the risks posed by the possible job apocalypse until after it hits. Now, according to Amodai, the biggest initial impact will come in white-collar occupations and hardest hit will be younger people who do the repetitive tasks in their early career in customer service and back office operations while they learn the skills that would serve them as they move more and more into senior positions. And while AI requires some supervision and makes some mistakes, so do younger people. So why is there not an authentic and wider discussion of this? Amodai says most people are unaware that this is about to happen. It sounds crazy, and people just don't believe it. So why does this matter? If Amodai is right, we may be watching the start of what Axios calls a white-collar recession, driven not by market downturns, but by algorithms. And just because companies aren't saying it out loud, some are clearly rethinking their staffing needs because AI is quietly picking up the slack. We knew that package software was going to overtake custom development when executive language shifted to package first. In other words, before you could propose custom development, you first had to establish that there was no software package on the market that could do what you were proposing. Make no mistake, in the early days, this did lead to some disasters, but it didn't stop the onrush of package software. Today, no sane IT executive would propose custom development without an incredibly strong case against purchasing a package. The same thing happened with cloud hosting and SaaS software. They went through their early period, they went through their failures, but eventually became dominant when you started to hear cloud first. Now it is happening. Companies are starting to say AI first. In other words, prove that AI can't do a task before you propose hiring a person. Now, will this lead to what Axios termed the white collar bloodbath? The reality is nobody knows for sure. Some are still clinging to an unproven assumption that AI will create new jobs, but they have little to justify that other than that's the way it's always happened with technology. But Amodai says, quite rightly, that we have to at least start considering what could happen if a mass of jobs, particularly entry-level jobs, are totally wiped out because that's a larger societal discussion. I'm reminded that during the height of COVID, the shutdowns, Unemployment in the U.S. and Canada was about the same, about 3 to 4 percent, and it jumped suddenly to about 13 to 14 percent. By best estimates, that added up to $2 trillion in terms of additional deficits in the U.S. and almost $300 billion in Canada's much smaller economy, about a tenth the size of the U.S. These are just estimates, but I doubt they're far off. So what would happen with our greater levels of debt if unemployment suddenly jumped to 10 or even 20 percent, not for a year or two, but on a permanent basis? What would we do if youth unemployment moved to staggering levels because entry-level jobs just didn't exist? These are the discussions we need to be having instead of assuming everything will somehow work out, and that's presumably why Amodai is issuing such a clear warning. And as he said, he has nothing to gain personally from this. As he noted, one of the solutions might be to tax AI companies, which he says is clearly not 
in my economic interest. But for Canadians, you have to wonder, we don't have AI companies to tax. What would we do?